into Okay, so for our next topic, uh, this time we're going to discuss now the topic of moment of inertia. So this is the chapter 8 on your book, na Engineering Mechanics by Ferdinand L. Sino. So that is on page 195, but again, I prepared the PowerPoint, so in outline ko na yung uh, discussion on the chapter. So if you're going to turn the PowerPoint on the second slide, so ipat natin. So 8-1, this is the definition of moment of inertia. Okay, so unayin natin basahin yung unang bullet. So that is moment of inertia. Moment of inertia applied to areas has no real meaning when examined by itself. It is merely a mathematical expression usually denoted by the symbol I. So in short guys, yung uh, moment of inertia kasi if you're going to analyze it alone. So wala naman kasi siyang uh, definite meaning. It is merely an expression usually denoted by the symbol I. Okay, doon sa sunod, sa second bullet. So however, when combined with other terms, for example, the flexure form formula, it begins to have significance. So, yung flexure formula acid, that is the next topic do sa mechanics of deformable bodies natin, which is the strength, oh, the stresses in beams. So, that's why, uh, tinanong ko sila kung na-discuss ba yung pagkuha ng centroid and moment of inertia. Since yung mga variable na yun is gagamitin natin do sa flexural formula. So, yung flexural formula mo kasi is equals sa uh, stress, or the bending stress, or flexural stress, is equals to M multiplied by C over I. Yung M mo kasi, that is the maximum moment, or moment siya, so hindi naman lagi maximum, pero when you design, it's always the maximum, ano. Or kapag may binigay na specific uh, value ng moment, for example, uh, nagbigay lang siya ng limit na ito lang yung moment na gagamitin. So, pero most of the time, it's the maximum. Ano? Multiplied by C. So, ang C mo is the centroid. Normally, ang pinag-uusapan dito sa flexural stress is yung uh, Y bar. Since yung uh, reference axis natin most of the time is the X axis. So for C, it's either your, if it's a uh, composite area na hindi siya equal on top and bottom. So yung C mo is it's either Y top or Y bottom. And uh, over I, so ang I is the moment of inertia. So ayan, nag-aarang siya ng meaning kapag yung mga ano, gagamitin natin siya sa mga equation na yun. Aside from that, Kakailanganin mo rin si moment of inertia kapag i-consider mo yung deflection of beam. Usually, this is uh, denoted by M over EI. So, saan yung EI, yung ilalim, that is deflectional rigidity. So, this quantifies the resistance for bending. So, kaya nga deformation na na, or deflection. Kung saan yung I is the resistance due to cross-section shape. So, dyan papasok si moment of inertia. And yung E, kung matatandaan sa ating mechanics of deformable of bodies, that is the resistance due to material stiffness. So, that is the young modulus of elasticity. Aside from that, yung I mo is kakailanganin mo rin sa analysis or design of column. So, meron tayong tinatawag na slenderness ratio. Kung saan yan ay equal sa KL over R. So, equal siya or less than or greater than uh, on a specific uh, given bounded. So, magbigay siya ng value. So, you need to check kung saan siya papatak ng category. Kung saan yung R sa equation na yan, that is the radius of gyration. So, kung nabrowse nyo na yung ibang slide, so, diniscuss rin na si, slender, si radius of gyration. So, that is just equals to square root ng I over A. Kung saan yung I, 
so that is the moment of inertia and A so that is the cross-sectional area kisa uh, sa pangatlo so many engineering formulas such as those relating to strength of materials yeah, blah 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 so yun nga, yun din yung sinabi ko kanina involves the use of mathematical expression uh, integral of rho squared over dt where rho is the perpendicular distance from dA this integral appears frequently that, is an, that it has been named moment of inertia so yung rho squared over dA na yan so dyan ang derive yung moment of inertia so mamaya ipapakita natin kung paano ba nakuha yung mga equation yun. Okay, so next tayo, uh, third slide. So consider this diagram. Ayan. So ito naman, ah, nagkaroon din siya ng discussion dun sa link na binigay ko sa inyo, yung video. So napakaganda nun, uh, please panoorin nyo. So kahit ako, uh, na-appreciate ko siya kasi maganda. Maganda yung pagka-discuss yung illustration niya. Maganda. Very informative. And also from that, uh, itong dalawang equation na ito, dito na-derive yung mga formulas. So with reference the x-axis, the equation will be integral of bar y squared over d. So lang yung perpendicular distance yung consider natin. Ano? If I x siya, therefore yung counterpart niya will be the y. And vice versa, if i y yung pinapahanap, so therefore the perpendicular distance you need to consider is the distance x. Okay, so yun lang yung sinasabi doon. Uh, next, we're going to turn the PowerPoint on the next slide, the third slide. Sorry, I mean, this is the fourth slide already. So doon, sabi, the moment of inertia is sometimes called the second moment of the area. Because each differential area multiplied by its moment arm gives the moment of area. When multiplied a second time by its moment arm, gives the moment of inertia. So, kaya pala siya tinawag na second moment of area. Kasi yung area mo, iminoment mo lang ng dalawang beses. And the next, moment of inertia dimension is in quartic units. So, units raised to the 4. So, kasi yan ay na BH cube. Tama. So, yung normally yung units niya is in millimeter raised to 4, mm to the 4th, or inches to the 4th, or depende sa given na uh, dimensions. Basta lagi siya naka raised to 4. Next, the sign convention depends only on the sign of the area. So, it is independent in the perpendicular distance since squaring the negative value will make it positive. Okay, so ang nagdidikta dito daw ng uh, sign ng iyong uh, moment of inertia is yung area. Kasi nga naman, if co-consider mo distance, kahit sabi mong nasa negative x axis siya or nasa negative y axis, kung i-squared mo yan o i-raise to the fourth mo, maka-answer lang yung negative. Kasi negative times negative, so that will be also equals to positive. So, ang sign convention, ang uh, mag-preprevail dyan is yung sign ng iyong area. Okay, so next slide. So, polar moment of inertia. So, ito, uh, kung maaalala ng may deformable body sa akin, yung polar of moment of inertia, nag-appear siya dun sa topic na torsion. Tama ba? Kung saan ito ay ginamit dun sa... Uh, torsional stress in TR over J and dun sa angle of twist yung TL over JG so yung J mo, that is the polar moment of inertia so that is just the sum of your IX plus IY so normally na makapag torsion, ano naman siya lagi uh, yung shape niya is circular or yung butas yung gitna. So that's why uh, pinasaulo ko na lang sa inyo yung formula for circle. And then, ayun, dun lang din naman siya nang galing. Ano? So again, polar moment of inertia, that is just the sum of your IIX plus I1. 
Okay, next slide. So, it discuss about the radius of gyration. So, sometimes, this is denoted by letter K. Pero kung ako sa inyo, ang gamitin nyo na lang na for this equation is yung R. Bakit? Kasi yung K mo, dun nga, dun nga sa slenderness ratio, KL over R. So, ito kasi sa steel, sa structural steel design yung didiscuss. Dun kasi sa KL over R, yung R nyo yung radius of variation. So, yung K niya, may factor pa kasi yun. Depende sa connection ng iyong column. So, mas maganda, uh, sa uloy mo na lang siya yung formula ng radius of variation as R, para hindi na lang kayo malito in the further higher subject. Na. So, the equation for that is R is equal to square root of I over A. Where I, is the mo that is the moment of inertia. And A, is that is the cross-sectional value. So, sabi dito, is used to describe another mathematical expression and appears most frequently in column formulas. Ayun nga. So, pag nag-design ka ng column or analysis of column. And so on. And then, yung sinabi ko. Ayun nga. And the next slide. So, the transfer formula for moment of inertia. Or the parallel, 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 bisaya. Or parallel axis theorem. So dito, i-discuss dito kung uh, paano mo makukuha yung moment of inertia kapag uh, nagbigay siya ng specific uh, na axis na paghahanapan. Or kapag, if ang ina-analyze mo is composite area. So dito, ang moment of inertia na pinag-consideran mo is yung uh, centroid ng buong composite figure. So, kailangan mo talaga mag-transfer moment of inertia. So, instead of mag-integral ka, meron siyang binigay na formula. So, sometimes this transfer formula for moment of inertia is also known as parallel axis theorem. Okay, so sabi doon, it is often necessary to transfer the moment of inertia from one axis to another parallel axis. So, doon sa diagram, nagbigay siya ng, uh, kung mapapansin mo, meron siyang centroidal axis. That, so, that is denoted by x sub c and y sub c. Ngayon, ang nirequired na moment of inertia sa kanya is yung given x axis. So, considering the distance d, so, para makuha yung ix na yun, so, siya ay equals lang sa ix sub c or the centroidal x-axis, yung moment of inertia niya, the so centroidal x-axis, plus the area, multiplied by the distance, d squared. Okay, so the transfer formula for the method of doing this without further integration, were, ayun nga, so ito lang din naman yung sinabi ko. Okay, so that ends the PowerPoint. So, Para mas maunawaan nyo, uh, try natin sa mga example. And for the first example, ipapakita ko sa inyo kung paano ba madi-derive yung mga equation na yun. Ano, using the integral. But then again, if ayaw mo mag-derive na mag-derive, uh, just memorize the table, yung mga value doon. So, ituturo ko sa inyo kung alin lang yung kailangan sa ulo. Then yung iba, i-derive nyo na lang. Pero, para mabawasan, uh, para hindi na tayo mag-integral, uh, isa sa ulin lang kayo. So, kadalasan, uh, ang mas maganda, sa ulin nyo lang is yung mga moment of inertia ng mga centroidal axis. Ano? Then, after that, tsaka na lang natin siya itra-transfer using the transfer formula for moment of inertia.